Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, I get a new custom knife from Kramer Custom Knives, the voodoo, if you want to know. Uh, the Civivi, the Civivi drops a new model in Nitro V. That's coming out for Blade Show. And also, we talk a little bit, we unpack the topic uh, of our knife fight last week, which is basically where do knives go from here? Rehashing old designs, coming up with infinitely new models like Civivi, uh, or innovating and actually moving on into something new, a new realm. Hello, Nick. Good to have you here. Me and my para three are ready. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Love the wolf. The wolf festoons my car and my coffee mug. Quack, how's it going? Yo, yo, yo. Good to have you here, sir. Uh, oh, and we have Chris the Blade Ogre with us. Hey, how's it going, Blade Hobby? Excellent to have you here, sir. Martin Gamboa, always a pleasure. Good to have you here. Slicey, how's it going, Brian? Great to have you. And Caleb, howdy, howdy. Man, all these gentlemen of such distinguished taste. Michael Morgan, great to have you here. Bob and Jim, he says. Black Multicam. Looking like John Wick in that picture. Good to have you here, sir. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Mm -mm -mm. Got it right here. I love this thing, but you'll you'll be happy to know I don't. I'm not carrying it. I never carry. Just so you all know, I never carry loaned knives. They all live over on a shelf, uh, special special shelf. Uh, the not my shelf. I be free. How's it going? I be free too, and I'm glad to hear you are as well. John Cran, sup? How's it going, sir? And G-Man, good to have you here, G-Man. Uh, as always, uh, the first thing I like to do here is the pocket check. And uh, today, uh, in my front right pocket, I was carrying something I just don't pay enough attention to. But what a fantastically awesome knife this is. I used it for three things today. I used it to cut two bagels. Uh, I'm counting that as one thing. Uh, I used it to cut an apple, which it did with a plum with a plum, <laughs> uh, and I uh, used it to cut open a box containing another knife, and I'll show that knife off later. Uh, but first, let me show you this. Today I was carrying my Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. Great knife. I mean, what can I say? Uh, you all knew it before I did. Um, I'm always late to the party when it comes to getting getting the latest and greatest, uh, when this was the latest and greatest. What are they on right now? The Neutron, I think, which is a smaller version of this. Um, what a what an amazing knife. It's so smooth and just like effortless, really effortless uh, when it comes to closing it, you know, just, mm, it's just buttery, buttery smooth. And this blade, 20 CV, if you, if you care to ask, is very thin, and just nice and slicey, really nice. Like some some of the knives I like to carry, you know the kind of knives I like to carry. Sometimes like cutting an apple with this, for instance, is like uh, you know batoning or or hitting it with an axe. Uh, the the apple just sort of cracks and falls open. This just gave me nice thin slices, totally unnecessary because I got these right here. But still, I like to, I like to, I was pointing to my teeth. I do like to use a knife when I eat. Now, I think it had to do with losing these front two teeth in a bike accident and then losing the replacement in an olive accident. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It was very embarrassing. I bit into an olive, not realizing the pit was there. Who bites into an olive anyway uh, with their front teeth? Well, I did and uh, cracked one of my replacement teeth. So uh, from here on out, it's it's cutting with uh, cutting apples with a knife, and I'll, I'll tell you what the Three Rivers Manufacturing Adam does it beautifully. So I had that on me. Uh, this is a replacement scale. This uh, wing um, wing patterned G10. They have you know so many nice uh, replacement scales. This one came to me uh, on the secondary market with a green micarta scale. You know me, I love my Carta, but it was just kind of a flat, boring scale. The, these are contoured and beautiful and have just have this really cool texture uh, milled into them. Plus, I love that British Racing Green. I think, um, uh, who has? Uh, Bearded Gear, I think, has one just like this, um, I think. Well, that's what I'm sticking with. And uh, on my belt, 
which is uh, nice this time of year. You know, uh, short short sleeve shirts. I feel more at ease untucking. You know, you might not know this about me, but uh, I'm I'm a pretty formal guy. That's not true. Quack. I cut myself with a TRM Adam last week from fidgeting. It is indeed slicey. Um, so today I was carrying this on my belt in the front. This is my uh, Bastinelli custom uh, anomaly, which I can never spell anomaly. I always put I always spell it wrongly, incorrectly. Uh, beautiful knife, so great with this burgundy cord wrap, and just fun to wear on the belt. I wear it horizontally right in front of my belt buckle like this. This is. Uh, my POV looking down and then you just lift up the shirt, put the finger in the ring, whoosh, pull it out, pretend to stab someone in front of you and put it back. That's pretty much all it gets used for. But I, I still like it for that. <laughs> you know, um, uh, some guys like uh, like electronics to play with. Some guys like um, uh, I don't know. Uh, people have their little toys, especially men. And this this is definitely one for me until it's not a toy. Uh, I think it goes really nicely with the British Racing Green. This was not a plan, uh, but uh, boy, what a dapper mistake or happy accident that was. Uh, I, I really like the way those two look together. So these are uh, just two, just two today. I was exercising restraint, um, and so that's what I carried. What were you all carrying? You, I know it was something good. I mean, I've seen the names in the comments so far, and we have, uh, like I said, a lot of... Uh, gentlemen and ladies with really excellent taste and uh, very cool knives. So let me know what you're carrying today. I'm interested. Uh, Dave says, Bob, I'm carrying the Grand Drago. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm not carrying the Grand Drago either. Yeah, that, that sucker is huge. You're welcome to carry it, uh, but... Um, uh, but that sucker is huge, and there is a scratch on the on the titanium side. So, you know, psh, it's dead to me at this point. Uh, just kidding, it's not. Blade Hobby says, "Hit like, oh yes, yes, everybody, hit that like button." And uh, you know, if you're not subscribed, boy, that would be that would be a tragic mistake on your part. American Blade Works Model One, excellent V6. I didn't know he was on the V6. I have the V5. Now I feel like I'm out knived. And the Spyderco Lil Native. Such a cute little native. Uh, what? So I'm, I'm curious, uh, G-Man, what it, are the improvements of the V6, if you know? Ed Hardy, great to have you here, sir. Gerber flat iron in my pocket. Got it yesterday. Interesting about the flat iron. I was just kind of looking at mine. It, it's in my uh, one of the drawers of my of my cabinet. and. Um, I got it early. Oh, 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 no, not on the base. My my light just collapsed, and it, it looked like it was going to fall on my bass guitar. It didn't. How's the light look? A little bit uh, film noir now? Um, but uh, the flat iron that I got was the earlier model with the um, where the hole was kind of in the wrong spot, and it just was impossible to to nearly impossible to deploy, and it had a few really nasty hot spots. David says, hey, everyone carrying the 4MAX PM, uh, excellent, which 4MAX, I'm curious, and the PM3 lightweight 20CV today. I didn't know that they did that, but uh, don't they do it all? That's actually basically our topic of discussion tonight is uh, all of the, well, kind of reiterations of certain designs and a and whole bunch of new designs and all that. Para three all week, just because I'm in the midst of moving while still working. No time for knife swapping. Yeah, sometimes it's like kind of like when you go on vacation, Nick, or when I go on vacation anyway, having one or two knives and just being like, wow, the discipline of me just bringing one or two knives. I'm really going to get to know this knife over this vacation. I kind of like that, actually. Um, but I can't do that at home when I have all these choices uh, at hand. Chris was carrying the Tuya Bruiser Clip Point. That's a cool knife. I was kind of like that and the boker plus caracol so two two biggish knives um uh, presuming uh, that it's not the caracol fixed blade and the hogue sig sour x5 so three large folders on you i respect that i respect that curiosity though is where you carry them um living on the wild side today with the revo berserk oh oh Revo has such cool and weird designs. I've never handled one. TRM Shadow, excellent. Look at that. Brothers in TRM. 
Uh, Caleb Townsend was carrying his 920, an excellent knife that I sometimes regret giving away because now I've met people. Uh, now I know people who could regrind that. And, and I always thought that that knife needed a hollow grind. Um, and now it could, except I gave it away or sold it. That is blade hobby today. I got a few, uh, bench made super freak, uh, ZT 0640. Excellent choice. And my Bradford guardian three, uh, Bradford Guardian, always been curious about, have never had one. The 640 is another knife that um, I've always thought would benefit from a hollow grind. I still have that, and I might one of these days do that, uh, send it out to get hollow ground. Martin Gamboa, good to have you, sir. Uh, Copus Elvia, what an excellent, excellent choice. I love my Elvia. Uh, John had his Wee Malice. That's a nice big chunker of a knife. Um, Jared Neve did a did a really cool video recently talking about knives that make sense, and he featured the Malice uh, as a as a great sort of um, fancy pants hard use knife, and he had a, a lot of good things to say about it. All tie Demco oh eighty fifteen Manage, that's a nice one. I like that. At all tie uh, Revo Ness and uh, case medium toothpick in peach seed jig bone olive green bone. Nice. I, I like a uh, peach uh, seed jigging and that uh, olive green bone sounds awesome. I like the tiny little jigging. I like all kinds of jigging, uh, but I like the little tiny ones too. Been carrying my prototypes each day, bonding with my babies. Yeah. And posting them. Oh man. Ben's, uh, Ben's knives, his Jack Wolf knives. He's got the prototypes from, from Riot and oh my God, they are gorgeous. And when you show them from the spine first, I'm always like uh, really amazed at how nice and thin the um, the swedges make the front of the blade. Just beautiful. And they're hollow ground. Nicely done, sir. Black Multicam, Knives, Spyderco, Yo Jumbo, and the Bastinelli Pika. Oh, excellent choices all. And a watch, uh, Seiko SB, SPB 143. Now that's something Brian would be familiar with being a psycho a Seiko fanatic that is um I I love Seiko's uh, uh black multicam I just want to show you I just recently put the um I just swapped a deep carry MXG gear clip on my yo jumbo and I I thought it might well not very good with that on my left hand I thought it might have weird ergos but oh my god it's it's even better than the original clip in terms of how it feels on the palm so uh, if you're interested in deep carry on this, but thought maybe it would be weird just due to where the original clip is placed, I'm here to tell you, it feels great in hand. Really, really, really nice. So very happy about that. North code 1229. One, uh, I, I know him as Ryan. He is a new patron. Thank you, sir. So great to have you. Hope you got those stickers. I'm sure you didn't. They just went out yesterday. Prometheus STS clip point. Always wanted that. Is that in the um, Terravantium and the Hinderer Slippy Slicer? I am interested about the Terravantium and I love that STS uh, based on the Loveless Shoot Knife. Uh, I just love the way it looks too. Tim, good to have you here. Custom Alox Vic and a Spyderco Tanto PM2. Love the Spyderco Tanto PM2. Probably my favorite iteration of the knife. And my favorite iteration of that iteration is Alex's from uh, the Knifebox channel. His He's customized the hell out of it. It is gorgeous. It's fat carbon and all sorts of uh, Alex type materials. Looks beautiful. Hey, Jason, good to have you here. TRM Neutron. It's a TRM day. You know, it's like a gathering of eagles here with the TRMs. I'm loving it. XHP Recon 1. Is it the large XX, larger XL? I have this out for a reason tonight. Uh, mine is also X, XHP. Love that steel. And uh, I love the, the Recon 1. And I have the, the big one out tonight because coming up shortly, we, we're going to be doing the Gentleman Junkie uh, drawing and uh, that is of the Kershaw Strata XL. So I want this out just for, you know, comparison. Hello, Dan. Good to have you here. Uh, hey, from Canada. Great, great to have you in here from Canada. Paul Porter, SH, SHF since I got it last month. 
what is SHF? Why am I drawing a blank? Nitch, hey, how's it going, Nick? Good to have you here. Uh, we had uh, GEC81 Bullnose in Appaloosa Bone. Very, very nice. Appaloosa Bone. Is that a smooth bone? I I can't remember. Um, I wear tactical pants, so I carry like five to eight knives every day. Well, if you have a collection and you want to experience them, sometimes you got to do that. You just got to overload yourself like that. Um, <laughs> I was carrying my niche designs uh, egress just the other day. As a matter of fact, I just thought I needed to drop that because what an awesome knife that is. Uh, Formax is black and green, the new one, S35VN. Or it's not a new one, but it's a, an exclusive of someone. I can't remember who that is now. Um, <laughs> that, that seems to be a regular theme of this show. PM3 lightweight. I scale swapped into C oh, 20 CV. G man, the V6 has a new clip. Okay. And milled for both left and right hand carry. And the blade, hardware, and backspacer are now stonewashed. Ooh, nice. Great action, too. So, mine, uh, I, I, I'm not so interested in the left or right hand carry because uh, mine came correctly uh but the blade and hardware and backspace are being stonewashed love the sound of that especially because of the action uh, mine has taken a while to break in because it was a uh, medium uh, blasted and so uh, a, a slightly rougher micro texture on the tang and it's taken a while for the for the action to break in but it's broken in beautifully got mx MXG clips on all my spider codes. Excellent carry. I agree. I've only ever heard one disparaging mark about MXG gear clips, and now I'm guessing it was from Mr. Lynch. Uh, I'm joking about that, but someone said that they were brittle. I haven't had that experience. Aus 10 Vaquero. I think you were carrying that last week, Incognito. And spider code Centofante 3. C Centofante, right? Centofante, I think is what it would be in Italian. James, great to have you here, sir. President Merkin Muffley in the house. SHF, Spartan Harzi folder, of course. Durr. Yes. So I applaud you. <laughs> and I applaud you. Thank you. XL Recon is my favorite, IB Free says. It is It is a thing of beauty. And my um, mine has a, a, a matte finish on the blade. And then the Tanto has a shiny finish on the blade. But they're both X, XHP. Paul says, yes, Spartan Harzi folder. Skiff Drifter and Steen Camp Dogleg. Ooh, nice. Uh, um, uh, um, the Drifter, the Skiffs have recently been catching my eye. I always had super, super respect for them, but but not, uh, not a visceral attraction to them. But now I'm starting to uh, develop that. Uh, I think uh, also that was when... Um, was when uh, Jake from Bearded Gear got one. I was like, ooh, maybe it's his photographs. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Moon Pirate, <laughs> how you doing, Moon Pirate? Hi, everyone. I went to the Spyderco factory store in Golden today, picked up the S90V Little Native. I carried it for the rest of the day. Pretty cool knife. Pretty cool experience, I would imagine, going to the uh, factory store at Spyderco. I don't think I've ever been in Golden, uh, but I've definitely never been to the Spyderco factory. That sounds awesome. That must have been sweet, says Ben. Uh, to moon pirate that must have been i agree my new custom thornburn l36m front flipper is dangerously close to being finished Ooh, that sounds good that sounds good james is it a tanto <laughs> just kidding of course you're leaving all the tantos to us and we appreciate it sir uh, just as long as you show us your cool knives ed says waiting on cold steel's legal bally song do tell i don't know what's a oh is that like uh the parrot paradox are they coming back out with the paradox is it the same thing or are you looking for one on the secondary market because i think those are are bringing in big money now incognito my fighter knife will always be the vaquero but my work knife changes every two weeks ah i like that that's a good that's a good way to bond with the knife and to you know uh yeah it, it's easy to get uh uh what's the word um well, non-committal. You start just a, a quiz, uh, acquiring knives and like, oh, I carry this once and then never, never check it out again. Did you know that the Knife Junkie is on Twitch? I did not. Thursday Night Knives? Uh, I'm not saying that I did not. I'm, I'm saying it as, as if it's you who doesn't know. Because I knew. Uh, are 
live content on Twitch by going to www.thenifejunkie.com slash Twitch. Excellent. Most excellent. Uh, so this brings up something here. Um, actually, uh, James's comment about waiting for his custom Thorburn to be finished. Um, well, I just got a, I just got a new knife, uh, which I'll show off in a little while. Um, here's a little sample, uh, from Eric Kramer of Kramer custom knives. Um, he makes a lot of cool, small tactical fixed blades that are big in the Libra fighting world. Cause he does, he does that, uh, for fun. And there's a knife I've had my eye on for a long time. And then I interviewed him this week. That'll be coming out, I think on the 30th of May. And, um, boy, at the end of that interview, I, I ended up committing to a knife and I got that knife and I realized, um, my chest is just overflowing and, uh, you know, uh, I figured maybe I needed to move a few knives. So I am going to, uh, put up a knife video. I got to shoot it tomorrow, but I'm going to put up a knife video for patrons. And, uh, that first in parentheses is that in case, uh, if nothing sells, I will release it far and wide, but I'm selling a couple of pretty nice knives. Uh, I'll show you a couple of them here before we go to the drawing, which we will in just a moment. One of them, you're going to say, how in the world are you going to part with that? And my only answer is I have another awesome Bowie that was a gift that I will never get rid of in the same size range. So this Bark River Shining River Bowie or Shining Mountain Bowie is on the chopping block, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, this is gonna go. This is A2 steel and this antiqued stack wooden handle or stacked leather handle. I put it down because it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. What a cool knife! And I, I I was really drawn to this because a it's a great big awesome beautiful Bowie knife. I got to clean it up. There's some oil in there, but it's the shape of the blade of the Bowie that um, that uh, uh, Brad Pitt uses in Inglorious Bastards. It's basically the same rough shape and uh, his of course had that beautiful antler stag antler um but i just love this blade blade shape but i i can just barely justify uh owning it so i'm gonna move it along i think and uh it's got the beautiful sheath with the uh water waterproofing on it so it gets it gets all dark so i'm gonna sell this and then check this other one out and then there are others i'm not gonna show them all but um I am also parting with this sucker uh, because I lack some discipline a few months back and got a couple of uh, Randall knives. I, I, I'm going to sell my Blackjack Model 171 because it's uh, a copy of the, of the Randall Model 1 and 7 because it's a 7-inch blade. But, of course, this is um, a Blackjack made by bark river knives so it's got the convex edge and uh the swedge is not sharpened unlike uh every single randall almost every single model of randall has a sharpened swedge even the like skinning models and models you wouldn't expect to have it and it's in 3v which now that i'm thinking about it why am i getting rid of this but it's in 3v and it's got this nice ivory micarta handle so this is what happens when uh this is sacrifice, the concept of sacrifice, a better tomorrow by sacrificing something today. So uh, since I have spent a lot of money recently, I figured I should move some along and show a little discipline and maybe something good will come my way because I'm being such a good person in doing that. So uh, if you're a patron, look for that uh, video coming up uh, this weekend. And if you're not a patron, look for that video coming out a little bit later because who knows quite possibly that stuff won't sell so i will release it to the wider world after patrons get a chance speaking of patrons and gentlemen junkies it is time it is time look at that sucker <laughs> that bowie could stop a ship engine yes scott it could and and that's a great selling point i will mention that I'll mention that when I'm hocking it on my video tomorrow. So uh, the Strata XL, the Kershaw Strata XL, what an awesome knife. It's been sitting uh, on top of its box, not in the box, but on top of its box over on the on the guest shelf, uh, because if it, if it went anywhere else, it would start to get carried. I carried this one day and uh, did no damage to the clip. You'll, you'll be happy to know. 
So I just had to see how it carried. It carries amazingly. It's so thin and light with this hollowed out or, you know, skeletonized steel or pocketed, I think you call it, steel lock bar, uh, locking side and, uh, and the really thin G10 side. This, this is a very, very lightweight knife and a very great, large, beautiful Navaja esque knife. Um, so where did I put the, Oh, so here, here it is next to a standard sort of five and a half inch blade from uh, cold steel. So you'll see it's, it's got a little bit more blade length, a little bit less handle, better handle to blade ratio. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't go to work with this the same way I would go to work with this. I mean, I'd carry it to work like the office. That's not what I mean. I mean, like if I were going into the back and hacking at uh, vines and stuff, I'd rather have this. But if I were going to um, a ball, you know, which I do all the time, you know, and, and I had my tux on, I would much rather carry this because it's nice and light and and as discreet as any five and a half inch folder is ever going to get is that Strata XL from Kershaw. Thank you, Kershaw, for for jumping in the game. It took a while, but thanks for jumping in the game with the uh, with the XL Cold Steels. Um, there needs to be some competition for the XL Cold Steels, just because competition is good and it raises everybody's game. So there we have it. Are we ready to spin? Let's spin, Jim. Let's spin this wheel. I've been showing this knife off. I got to get it out of my, get it out of my room here because uh, it might just become too familiar to me. So, um, the uh, we'll we'll count down from three, three, two. Oh wait wait wait! I'm sorry. Before we do, let me just read off the names of our gentleman junkies. We have two new gentleman junkies. We have Sean Curry. Thank you so much, Sean. I got, I received that today and I will be sending out stickers tomorrow to you. We have Ryan, North, uh, North Code 1229. Thank you, sir. Your stickers are in the mail. We have OG1 Kenobi. We have Chris Wolf, Joseph Strycharts, Ben Belkin, who's on uh, right now. I'm quite aware of that. Uh, Jason Edwards. We have Martin Gamboa also watching. We have John Ladner. I'm sorry, John Ladner, Kurt Cromko, Ezekiel Yates. And uh, you know him as, uh, well, you know his videos with his dad, Jonathan. Uh, we have Mr. Filato, Jesse Tellis, Mike Latham, Edwin Callow, Ryan Leitner, Caleb Townsend, Reed Martz, or I like merits. I always imagine an umlaut over your name. Uh, Kevin Seastrom, Jock, and Timothy Becker. Thank you guys. Thank all of you, one and all. It's um, I'm I'm very grateful, very grateful to the help you give this channel, and uh, the value you find in it is uh, you know humbling. So thank you so much. Let's see which one of you great and fantastic gentlemen uh, gets this here Strata XL. So Jim, let's do it. We'll count down from three just to kind of make it seem official. Okay. In three, and two, and one. When it slows down, that's when it gets me. No way. Oh, sh Ryan. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to see that it went to someone new. And, and I was going to say, Sean, I thought it was going to stop at Sean. I was going to say our very newest member. Uh, so our second very newest member, Ryan, congratulations. Congratulations on winning this amazing Kershaw Strata XL. Uh, this is all yours. I will get it in the mail probably tomorrow. Uh, but but maybe it, it will be Saturday. Uh, that happens sometimes. So congratulations. What a great knife. I'm going to stop thumbing it now. I will I will actually I will clean it with a microfiber cloth and I will disinfect. Well, I won't disinfect it, but I I always uh, rub them down with alcohol before I send them out. I don't know where my hands have been. You certainly don't. So uh, so I'll do that. I will rub that down with alcohol and and get it all nice and clean for you and put it in the box and send it off to you hopefully tomorrow. So congratulations yet again. Sweet. <laughs> Nicely done, Ryan. Uh, I'm glad, glad to see you won. 
like Mr. Miyagi said, beginner luck. <laughs> yeah, that has happened more than once. Thank you, Bob. Oh, you're quite welcome, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you for, for helping us out over here. It's, your support's greatly appreciated. Hey, Ben, how's it going, sir? Good. How are you, Bob? Good. It's good to see you. Good to see you. How are, things, how are things going in the in the Jack Wolf world? I'm busy, man. Yeah. So I'm busy uh, getting ready for Blade Show. What kind of preparations are you doing? Well, <clears throat> uh, preparations for the table. Make sure the table is up to snuff. And then as that sort of grew from my original plans into what it is today, what could have maybe been carried onto the plane can no longer be carried onto the plane. So arranging transport to get stuff down there, none of that I've ever done before. So just lots right. of questions that I have to ask in order to understand my options and a lot of stuff coming together at the last minute, but looks like it will all come out the way I want it to. So are you saying that there are things that they would not allow you to put on the plane, like your prototypes, that kind of thing, or? or? No, not, not necessarily that, just too much stuff. Oh, okay. And with the shoulder, I'm not trying to manhandle too much luggage yeah. or boxes. Um, That's wise. <clears throat> yeah. You don't want to travel that, light. You don't want to spend that whole show in pain, worrying, you know, thinking about your shoulder. And uh, we've all seen in the news, probably they're, they're thinking they're going to start weighing, um, <laughs> weighing air travelers before they get on the train, uh, on the really? plane, which would just be hilarious. It's like, uh, you know, flying, is all you know commercial air flying is air flying commercial fly, flying is already humiliating let's just weigh everyone publicly hey joe good to have you here sir the jane oh you did he got the james brand barnes so good i shall call her mrs yummy oh my gosh man that's that's a pretty cool looking knife you know which one he's talking about ben i don't pull it up the maybe the new um the new barnes knife uh, we featured it the other the other week a couple of weeks back uh, it was uh, one of the one of the things that came out in knife news it's an integral made by riot for the james brand i i always say the james brand like the james gang uh but um james brand and and it is a really legitimately beautiful looking knife and uh just really you know awesomely executed by a little outfit you might know i heard of them before yeah <laughs> is it a locking knife oh yeah. cool i like that it's i like those clean basic lines yeah yeah thanks jim for for pulling that up this looks like a sabenza killer no i hate it when people say that but you know what i mean it's kind of in that realm it's like it's got the simple clean lines of a knife like a sabenza yeah, I'm just kind of studying this right now. It does have a, yeah, it, interesting. Is that a drop point? Was that what we call that? Yep. Yeah. Is that, what kind of grinds on that thing? It looks like it may be a hollow, but I can't tell. I don't know. Joe, is that a hollow? I I, I kind of assumed, yeah, like just from the, looking at the, um, uh, the, the, um, Plunge grind? Plunge grind, thank you. Yeah, just yeah. from looking at the plunge grind, it looks kind of like that. I don't know. I mean, I guess if I could critique one thing, the back of the handle's looking pretty rectilinear, if that's a big $10 <laughs> word. But I like it's not bad. But I'd love got, to get one in my hand and feel it. Yeah, it's got rectal in it, so I'm I, I'm all about that word. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's true. And if and if you flip it over, actually, Jim, um, if you have the Knife News uh, uh, page there, which I'm not sure if you do, uh, there is a shot of down below of the clip and the and the integral air i mean Ooh, look at that that's all you, cool all you got to do is cut off that lanyard i, I think the lanyard's kind of goofy i gotta say and i'm i can be a lanyard guy but the way that clip is integrated into the handle and the way the um just just the 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 blade well the way it terminates just so cool i'll send it to you he says oh geez oh geez <laughs> that sounds awesome I, I would love that. Gee, I don't know. The mail just stopped working, dude, is what I'll say when I don't send it back. I'm just kidding. Uh, Quack says, I don't know how I feel about the green studs, but it looks classy overall. It's, it is a $600 knife. And, and I'm, really? I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to mention that, Joe. I don't mean to be gauche, but uh, 
Yeah. It, yeah. So it is, it's integral, you know, that's like such a, an expensive process already. And it's an American company and it's Riyadh. So, I mean, I can see how it would cost that much. Um, but, uh, you know, we were having a discussion a few weeks back about, um, you know, other knives you can get for 600 bucks. And, um, and since it's an unproven entity, but in a way it's not because it's made by Riyadh. You know, at that price point, you know, a guy's got a little money to spend. Assuming you're going to spend 600 bucks on a knife, it's disposable income. Just buy what you like. You know, maybe it's not the best deal. Maybe it doesn't compare as much to some other $600 knife. But if you like it, buy it. Like, yeah, yep. you know, that's kind of the way I look at it. Well, that's a good way of looking at it because obviously it's not necessary. Right. It's like if you just need, a, if you don't have a lot of money, you need a knife that cuts, man, we can get you something for 40 bucks that'll last you your whole life. Yeah. If you're buying something that's a luxury item, you can't always microanalyze the price on everything. It kind of takes the fun out of it. And then you talk yourself out of buying something you might've really liked. It's like, you're really going to miss that extra hundred bucks in a year, in two years, you know, probably not. Yeah. Or in a week even. I mean, it's <laughs> right. Funny, exactly. It's funny how funny, how quickly or a pay period, however you want to look at it. It's funny how quickly, um, I, I, you know, one tends to recover. It's a bit overpriced to me. I hear that. I do hear that. Um, I mean, for me, I've never had an integral. So uh, I dig the green studs. I also do too. I have a hard time with the lanyard. Just cut that off. Cut that sucker off. But yeah, it's it's interesting <laughs> how, how quickly, like once, once the, this version after discount code was 530 bucks. That's actually, I mean, you know, it's like you said, Ben, I, I, I'm agreeing with you there. Um, if you're already spending, obviously, a lot of money on a knife, it's like, what is the extra extra little bit? Not that it's right. little, but you know what I you're mean. You're never going to regret buying what you really wanted. You know, that's my experience. And you do, you know, maybe your ego feels it a little bit if you overpay for something, but that goes away when you actually get the enjoyment out of the item. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Like you can also be a little, maybe more disciplined, a little more patient, find that thing on the secondary market, save some money. There's yep. nothing wrong with that either. But I don't think me personally, I don't always look at price as some huge factor. Like if I can't afford it, I'm just not browsing for it. You know? Yeah. Scott says quality costs. Art isn't cheap. Speaking right. of that, uh, uh, Picasso painting just sold for what was it? A hundred and hundred and three million dollars. Talk about art not being cheap, man. Dang. Um, yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Hey, what up, man? How's it going, guys? It's been a long time. Good to see you, sir. It has. Yeah. It's good to see you guys. How's the world treating you? Pretty good. I actually just recently moved to a new place. I recently moved in. It's a new house. First house. Oh, nice. Exciting. But that's a whole stressful adventure, right? Congratulations. That's awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing like a house. <laughs> uh, I, I, speaking as a, someone who was an apartment dweller for many, many years, um, moving into a house, moving out of the city was awesome too. Yeah. So finally getting a little more distance from LA and crazy LA traffic is nice. Uh, working from home is a whole thing. So. Oh, nice. So uh, what have you been up to lately? I mean, besides moving into a new house. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to pop on real quick for kind of two things. First, you were asking about the uh, Appaloosa bone that I was carrying today. Oh, yeah. So it is a smooth bone. Oh, man. Oh, that is beautiful. But it's kind of my go-to apple carver for these days. That's but, a beaut. Is that is that just two blades? Is that a, a sort of mule? Uh, yeah, so it's a bull moose pattern. Bull moose, that's, that's what, what it is. It. What, what so was it's that got thing? your spear point and your clip. And that's the kind of spear point that I love. That that machine ground swedge is that what that's called? Machine ground cut swedge. swedge. Cut swedge. Cut swedge. Yeah. Oh right, right. I think I was uh, conflating them. Uh, that's a beautiful knife, man. Yeah, that'd be a nice one. But always keeping the skiff handy too. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to pop on to uh, kind of I don't know plug this pre-order that I have going for this shirt that I designed. I don't know if you guys. Oh can see. yeah. These things that might look familiar to some of you other yes. knife steel nerds, but uh, I designed this shirt a while back. This was actually the second uh, design with this kind of Helvetica font that I had done. So people seem to like it. 
I'm doing another pre-order that's open until tomorrow night of the same shirt. If you guys go to my website, it's kind of in an updated font. It's got my logo on the back, um, but easy to jump on. It kind of takes just a couple weeks for the screen printing once I close the pre-orders tomorrow. But if you guys are interested in a knife-related shirt that doesn't scream that you're carrying knives on your person at all times, <laughs> you can jump over to the site and check it out. It's just uh, nichedesigns.online. You can find the shop from there. Niche designs dot online. Mm -hmm. I like I like how a knife guy is going to know what that is. Yeah, and other people are going to wonder what it is. Yeah, what? Yeah. The so the name of the shirt is actually "If You Know, You Know." Right. If you know, you know. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. I, 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 who have I seen wearing that recently? I have seen someone. Wearing There's a that. few people have jumped on the previous run. So Jake actually helped me come up with the name. He wears it on some of his reviews, and a left uh -huh. EDC has some. Uh, so gets around, yeah. Nice, man. Well, nicely done. I like it, <laughs> and I love Helvetica. Do you ever see the um, the documentary on, on so. the font Helvetica? It's actually fascinating. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's a whole 90-minute documentary about the Helvetica font, and it's so interesting. You should nice, check it nice. out. it as a designer. Uh, oh, awesome. Thanks, guys. G-Man got one. Bearded Gear wore it recently. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's, I think, where I saw it. Well, Nick, man, it's good to see you. Good to hear from you, man. Yeah, you guys, too. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, everything that Ben's got going on. All these knives that he's posting look pretty awesome. Oh, man, they are. I appreciate that. that Laidback Jack is definitely uh, a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. It's nice to see you. Uh, you know, put a face with the name. I like that a lot. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. If you ever need fusion tips, right? I'm always here to help. I'm going to need fusion tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he showed me a way to get uh, 3D CAD software for a year for free, which was like epic. Oh so I owe Nick one over there. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you guys do your thing, but it's nice seeing you. Hey, Nick, anytime you want to join us and do your thing while we do our thing, I'd <laughs> love to have you, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. All, All righty, right. sir. Take care. There he yeah, goes. Bob, give yeah. me one sec. My computer's telling me it's about to die, but I'm plugged in, so I got to do some technical uh, difficulty stuff here for a sec. You got Sorry. it. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, Tim, it, it's niche, N-I-T-C-H, designs, dot online. And then from there, uh, it's the... If you know, you know, t-shirt. I think that's what it was. Those who know, know, or if you know, you know. I think uh, I think that's that's how it goes. Um, so let me know, guys. Uh, I, I brought this up earlier, and this was a knife fight last week. But rehashing old designs like Spyderco does, infinite new models like Wii Civivi does, or innovation and just kind of leaving this time in the knife world and heading in new directions and doing something completely different or at least innovative. Where do you stand on this? What, what is the future? Where do knives go from here? Uh, you know, I'm a little philosophical tonight, but I, I am curious because I, I think it was that last spider co reveal number eight, where I was just like, cool. Uh, but, and actually really, I, I do want to get that resilience with the, with the, blue handle and the and the serrations and the s35vn that looks really actually cool to me i like that model and i wouldn't mind it in the new iteration but um it's just kind of i don't know let, let me know what you feel about that um and and if i'm just going over something i talked about last week you know you can let me know that too but i am curious because it we got some opinions on it last week how do you feel about it? Speaking of Civivi, they have a new model coming out in Nitro V. Um, and it's very exciting uh, for Blade Show. Now, I like the few Civivis I have. The Asticus is, is awesome. And I have a, a couple of dogmas given by both two fantastic gentlemen who happen to be watching right now. You know who you are. Thank you very much. And I love those two designs. This new one uh, is a front flipper, and it also has a thumb stud, uh, and it's just, it, I'm sure it's an awesome knife uh, in Nitro V, but it's, it's, 
to me, it, it, I can't, I'm starting to have difficulty differentiating. And I know you're saying, Bob, you always have difficult differentiating because you can never remember the names of, of the knives. But I think that's because there is a glut of them. And, uh, well, anyway, I don't mean to bad, bad mouth Civivi. I, I love what they're doing. Uh, but um, I don't know. So this is called the Imperium. And uh, it's in Nitro V. And... It, that's sort of akin to AEBL, which I only am familiar with because I've made a couple of knives in AEBL, which uh, Alex Steingraber um, uh, heat treated for me. So I, I, I know it as a good steel, uh, but you know, my grind, I don't, I don't grind blades like Civivi, you might be surprised to find out. So it's kind of hard for me to judge, but this is a three and a half inch blade and um, you know, it's a front flipper, and I haven't seen it with the uh, with the extended tang out. Uh, I, I always like to see what the front flipper actually looks like when it's folded, because I can sort of gauge whether or not I'm going to be a total reject with it or not. But this is one that they're bringing out for a uh, blade show. And uh, I don't know. A any thoughts on this, Ben? What's the price? Uh, what is it? Fitty? Uh, I think it's in the fifty to seventy-five dollar range. Yeah, I, I you know it's not necessarily daring and bold, you know, from a design standpoint. But yeah. I think it appeals to. It's hard not to be appealing at the price point with some kind of premium steel. And it's just like I wonder: Are these knives just made to be sort of mass appealing and a way to deliver someone? a blade steel they might not own, you know, is that kind of the angle? Cause it doesn't necessarily seem like the focus is on something new and different or unique from a design standpoint. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm sure it's comfortable. I'm, you know, I'm sure it works just fine. Hey, um, okay. So what you're saying, anyone out there who's a big Civivi or Wii fan, what is this? What itch is this particular Civivi scratching other than the Nitro V? And maybe that's what it is. Maybe maybe Ben's right. Maybe this is solely about uh, a different steel. But, like, why does this need to exist? Uh, think it's $75. And, and, and you know me. I love knives all across the board. I'm not saying that it shouldn't exist. I'm just saying, what do you think the justification for going through the trouble of creating this model happens to be in this case. Yeah, clean and practical, says Chris Jenkins. Clean and practical is good, but they, they already have a bunch of clean and practical knives that look very similar to this. Um, and who now they, sorry, who do you think they're competing with in the market that also sells clean and practical and maybe at a higher price point? Like, is that going after some Benchmade market share or even Spyderco market share? You know, because like, I'm just looking at it from a business Maybe. standpoint. They're coming out with a lot of these sub $100 knives. They got to appeal to someone. So what's the appeal? It's the price point. It's the steel. And it's maybe yeah. because it's an every man's knife or a little vanilla, like Spyderco, like Chris said. Uh, yeah. Also with them. Uh, yeah, it is pretty vanilla, I'd say. But also with them, it's the undeniably awesome action and the incredible blade grinds. But I mean, like, that's kind of how they are straight across the board. Uh, let me just pause here to to answer. This is the Wee Blackow. It is unfortunately not mine, uh, Black Multicam, but it is amazing. And they're really hard to find. Well, as in, like, I haven't been able to find one. This is on loan from This Old Sword, Blade Reviews, Dave. And it is so freaking cool. It's a, it's a four and a quarter inch blade. Or, or nearly four and a quarter, uh, 4.187 perhaps, uh, inch blade. And it's designed by um, Miguel Barbudo, who's a Spanish knife maker slash designer. And it's got a lot of these sort of Spanish, like that that clip point blade has, uh, has a lot of Spanish influence in it. And to me, it is just such a beautiful knife. And it feels great in hand. And sell it to me. If I could, I'd sell it to myself. It's not mine, unfortunately. But look at this back backlock. It's a very cool. interesting backlock. 
And uh, people were complaining that you can't flick it open. You can very easily. And you can one hand close. Oh, sorry. And you can one hand close it like like you can most um, cold steels just by interrupting the just by putting your finger there and basically interrupting the motion at the tang with your finger. You know, it's not like uh, it's going to cut you. So if this thing is just incredible. Very, very, very classy and feels great in the hand. That and, thing is definitely not vanilla. Yes, right, exactly, exactly. But it's a, it's a wee knife. Here, I'll put this down just in case. It is a wee knife. Uh, you know, we is the father company of Civivi. And so why doesn't Civivi do something like that in the inexpensive materials? That would be cool. Maybe it's just a production cost thing as far as machine time or wear on tooling, you know, I'm yeah. speculating. Yeah. 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 Um, but, no, but when you look at those Civivi knives, there's not a lot of angles. It seems as if maybe that would be a faster and more efficient to produce. Right. Sorry. I didn't mean to derail, but I'm going to be lusting. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> I know me too. And uh, incognito Griffin was right. It is, looks a lot like the Espada. Uh, and the Espada is based on the Spanish Navaja, and I think this is as well. Um, I honestly think they're just trying to get people to have a Civivi collection. I'm kind of with you, Joe. I, I kind of think like it's like a momentum thing. Um, and, and I think that, uh, Ben, your uh, assessment is probably also correct. They're simple, uh, easy to make in terms of machining. Like this would take more. To machine because you've got a lot of you've got choils and you've got contouring i mean of course you could do this with a flat slab and you could do it with a liner lock and you know uh, who knows uh how how difficult this blade would be to make but i'm sure they could they could make it in such a way but yeah i think joe might be right it might be just like do you remember when we first came out and everything was numbered they had the 600 series and then the next year, the 700 series. And they just came out of the gate with like 20 knives and they were all, you know, so it was like Insta collection. And so maybe that's part of their DNA. Let's see first. So let me show you one other cool thing. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you this knife that I just got that I'm very excited about. But there's one other uh, knife news story I wanted to show, and that is uh, a knife designer slash maker, Chris Taylor, his first production collaboration called the Nessie. And I remember seeing the Nessie on Instagram uh, as a uh, production, I mean, as a custom knife. And he's got this new one coming out uh, with um, Urban EDC. Does anyone know this company, Urban EDC? I think they're, well, Urban EDC Supply Company. So presumably they do pens and other cool stuff. But I love the look of this knife. Um, I love this sort of bulbous blade shape. Uh, in the article, they say it's kukri inspired. I don't know if I'd say that. It looks more, um, but, you know, fine. It looks like a barong to me. That's, I think, what I really like about it. And that handle is also really nice looking. So this is coming out in a couple of iterations through uh, Urban EDC Supply. And I just think it's super cool. I think it's a really good looking knife. Um, I don't know who makes it, though. That's the thing. In this article, it doesn't say who actually produces the knife. But I'm presuming it's uh, we or Riot, maybe Kraken Tactical EDC. Hey guys, how's it going? It's going great, man. Great to have you here. We're just taking a look at this new Urban EDC Supply uh, knife coming out, exclusive. Chris Taylor, uh, this is one of his customs, which actually started as a slip joint, I believe. Correct. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I love it as a flipper. I love it as a locking knife. I think it's a Nesamuk inspired, right? Is that how you say that? Nesamuk? Nesamuk? Oh, Nesamuk inspired. I, I was thinking Nessie like um, like the Loch Ness Monster because I'm a dork. <laughs> but yeah, Nesamuk. Yeah, definitely. Nessie looks good. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, well, you know what? I'm going to stick with Loch Ness Monster. I think it's inspired actually by that. Um, but a Nesamuk has a, sort of a, a different style blade. It's sort of a 
it's almost upswept, but it does have the rounded tip, rounded end. Yeah, uh, big old belly on it too. I think a nest yeah. muck. Yeah, it's like um, I think it's like a Canadian belt knife or a Canadian. Yeah. Uh, no wonder I was getting slip joint vibes from it. Yeah, yeah, I, I really think that handle is sort of evocative of it too. And you know, generally, I don't like giant swales uh, cramming your fingers in, but I, I like the way that looks anyway. I I have this design reminds me of the QSP that just came out. Hmm. I don't think I've seen that. I have never had a QSP and I am interested. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to, to try them out. Do you see that uh, GEC just dropped their bull noses? Yes, uh, I did. 71. Yeah, I the did. greens are about to hit. The reds came and went and the greens are coming. I do have a, a, a green. No, no. I have the natural tan canvas micarta from the last run. And then I have a green. What is it? 23, the big one. Uh, like a trapper? No, no, no. Uh, the big bull nose. Uh, they call it the bull buster. I think. Oh, I don't know that. I don't know. I know what you're talking about. I don't know the number. Yeah. Um, I, so I have one of each, and and I'm gonna keep it there. Um, uh, I have it on good word that I might get a fruit knife from Alex when he's done uh, doing all his reviews because he got two of them, and I don't know if I'll be able to say no to that, you know, because I might future me might appreciate that. You know, we are a community spread across time. Uh, when we, and so, uh, oh, the legatus, legatus, legatus. And so uh, future me might regret not buying the, the fruit knife. So I might have to do that. So uh, Chuck Gadritis is the interview coming up on, on um, Sunday. And if you remember from last week's show, uh, he just came out with, he's been making these, uh, what is he calling them? switch swiss switch no switch army knives and they look like they they kind of fit the pattern of a swiss army knife but they're uh bolster release not bolster they're scale release switch blades so cool. you just kind of push it this way and it you know fires out and uh anyway he's a very interesting dude making some outrageous art knives just some really really incredible uh uh, automatics that are one of a kind sculptures. They're amazing. And then he does uh, some, uh, some slightly more pedestrian knives in these switch army. Yeah, there's one right there. And then uh, they actually even have uh, accommodate the, the tweezers and the, and the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, toothpicks on them. And this version here, yeah, you can see it right there, the toothpick and the tweezers. Oh, and nice. And they have, he has one version that has a clip point and then a liner lock uh, cap lifter slash uh, flathead screwdriver. So it's a double bladed, double bladed, that one right there. The clip point comes out automatic style and then, and then the tool comes out with a uh, liner lock. Oh, oh it has a liner cool. lock, the tool? Yeah, the liner lock is, is kept in with a tool. Man, that's no, that's not vanilla, right? Like that's extremely unique and outside of the box. <clears throat> and I think uh, to the theme of your show, it's paying homage to the past, to a classic, but it's something new. Yeah, that's actually what uh, your opponent was arguing about your knives in the knife fight last week. Mm -hmm. Lad Gardner, good to have you here. Where do knives go from here? Thinner blade stock better cutting geometry. I, I know that there are a lot of people who would agree with you on that, especially especially as we descend out of the clouds of the overbuilt thing, which I, I'm still up there. I <laughs> do love the overbuilt. Who cares how it cuts, man? How does it look? Chris Jenkins. Oh, winner there. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Uh, to the tune of 800 bucks, nail neck. Yes. So the, the thing is, uh, yeah, it is a nail neck for that tool, but then the the um, the blade itself comes out automatic. The thing about the Gadritis knives are that um, he makes them, he puts them up on Instagram, and that's how he sells them. He doesn't do them in batches, so he you know he might in the future if he can get on board with a um, with an automatic maker. But anyway, check out the interview on Sunday. Very interesting guy, and you have to check out a couple of these crazy beautiful knives. 
he's he was just finishing up or had just finished right before the interview that he's bringing to Blade Show. They're amazing. Um, another guy I just spoke to this week, uh, uh, Eric Kramer of Kramer Custom Knives. Um, I had him make me a knife, and it I, I just got it today, and it's so great, and I love it, and I'm going to show it off right now. Um, it is a fixed blade. It is called the Voodoo, and here it is, this natural micarta. Look at this thing. It is just a beauty. It's, uh, I call it a clip point to me. It's like a modified Bowie, but uh, when he designed it, he was thinking of a Persian knife. And uh, so it's Persian inspired, but talk about an EDC fixed blade. This thing is nice and thin and it just disappears against the, it disappears right in the love handle. <laughs> it just nestles itself warmly uh, in that love handle. But uh, look at this thing. I am uh, I'm really really excited about this. It's hollow ground, and it's extremely sharp here. And then on the back side, I had them sharpen this too. And naturally, it's it. This is more of a tearing, gouging uh, kind of edge. It's not a thin slicey edge like this. Great score, Bob. Freaking love it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, it's got some nice jimping. Looks super comfy. It is. It's very. It's like uh, it's kind of in the realm of of a Bastinelli in that its its thinness is there. I mean, that's that's one of the things about Bastinelli fixed blades is that they're nice and thin, and they're great for EDC. Um, for EDC, and I haven't even measured this. What is it? It's uh, it's almost one. It's like three and a half inches, and uh, just. I'm very, very, very happy about this. He looks like a Spyderco 100 Pacer. Yeah, I've always kind of wanted a 100 Pacer. That That's a, a snake, the 100 Pacer. It bites you and you got like 100 paces before you drop dead. Kind of reminds me of a sharp finger. Oh, a sharp finger hunting, hunting knife. Yeah, I could see that. It looks like you get some nice leverage on that thing if you had to bear into something. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And uh, so it's it's his thing. You know, he's uh, he's into the Libra fighting system. Where, I mean, so he's into making knives for uh, fellow military. He's ex-military, but um, he was when he first started making them, he was making these giant, you know, survival things and survival knives, big, heavy affairs. And guys were like, uh, these are really great knives, but I can't. I got so much other shit I got to carry. Um, can you make the knife smaller? So they were getting progressively smaller. And then he started getting into this Libra fighting, which is uh, all uh, reverse grip and um, a lot of Pical style stuff. And uh, this is one of the designs that came out of that. And I've just been, I've just been sort of lusting after them on, on Instagram and, after our conversation, I, I was like, I noticed you had some blanks. Uh, can you make me one? And he did. Uh, you know. Hey, Bob, can I appeal yep. to Steven? Because I just see he just got on Patty's Potato Peelers. Oh, yeah. Steven, get on here, man. I want to give you another sneak peek, but it's a lot more fun when you're on the screen. <laughs> and I also wanted to appeal to your audience and say, someone hop on here, guys. Don't be shy. Like, it's it makes it for a fun show when – we get to see some more faces and all talk up here. I, I just wanted to maybe throw that out to the audience that we, we'd love to have you up here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean that, that's not just tonight. That's every night. Uh, that's, that's how Ben comes on. He just goes to the same place right here, the knife junkie.com slash join and joins the conversation. So yep. do it right now. Come on and show us also what you've got and what you're carrying. That's always fun too. I, like I want to, to show see. you something kind of cool, Bob. Well, let's see. So it. before Steven gets on, come on, Steven, we're waiting for you. <laughs> so you guys remember like there was a Pina tool that got dropped not too long ago? Yeah. Did you guys see that one? So I don't even know if they're selling these yet or what the deal is, but this is like a smaller version of that Pina tool that dropped. <clears throat> and you'll notice this is etched with like some wicked skull with bat wings and stuff. So I'm in a Facebook group. I'm an admin of a Facebook group. It's a slip joint group. It's called the yeah. slip joint. Um, 
And so because we're all kind of buddies, Enrique made us a deal on, I don't know, I think we bought like 20 of these. And then we sent them off to get etched with the <laughs> dude with a laser in Texas. So we got our kind of group logo on this thing. It's a pry bar, but it has the hex or what would you call that? Like a little, like a wrench? Yeah, yeah. The bottle opener, the pry, and then I think each edge of this can work as like a flathead screwdriver. Um, and can you, can you put that a little closer to your? Uh, yeah, I'm just struggling with my uh, other shoulder. So I uh, normally yeah. I want to hold my hand up and kind of zoom yeah. in. Here, let me try this. Uh, there it goes. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's pretty sweet, man. Yeah. So we're gonna have like we sold some to the group. Um but we have some extras and if they're still available by the time blade show comes around, we're going to have them on my table at blade. If someone wants to try to snag one of these. And if anyone's interested in getting in that slip joint group, and seeing some cool pictures and slip joint discussion, just shoot me a message and I'll get you in there. Cool. Well, thanks Ben. Hey, uh, what's that material? Is it steel or is it titanium or what? I, you know what? I, I knew you were going to ask me that. It feels like titanium. The, the bigger one he did that has a pocket clip on it. It's like the big brother version of this. Oh, yeah. It also has like a, I think another screwdriver there. Yeah. Yeah. He's covering that. that. And it's almost like a mini pry. So the bigger one he did was M390. Oh, wow. Um, so I don't know if this is M390 also or if this is titanium. Like I should probably know that. But anyway. That is a sweet little remembrance of that. Uh, of that. Oh, Chris says he needs to get on that slip joint group. You know how to get a hold of me, Chris. That's cool. So uh, in groups like that, Ben, are you getting uh, all sorts of uh, uh, early drops and that kind of thing? No. So that's just like an enthusiast group. What you get out of those groups usually is, aside from, of course, the camaraderie, mm -hmm. um, you know, private sales between individuals in the group. So okay. you make friendships in there and, you know, oh, dude, that's sweet what you have. And, oh, I like what you have. And before long, it's like, I'm not going to the market with this. I'd rather sell it to my boy. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, exactly. And you and know it's that. It's like, go ahead. Well, you know it's going to a good place. And you also know that they're going to understand the value. And so there's not going to be too much, you know, you'll probably give them a good deal. They'll probably uh, give you what it's worth. Um Chris Jenkins, I do fantastic tool as well. Hey, uh, what was the uh, last comment that was up from Kraken Tactical? Agreed, thinner blade stock for certain designs. However, makers also need to put out knives that can stand up to all foreseen abuse they might be put through uh, since batoning has become a thing. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, something like this. Yeah, it's not going it, to It's not gonna get too... too uh, too much attention on the batoning end of things, but I, I, I see your point. Like speaking this, of, uh, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, I mean like this thing is a giant beast <laughs> of a, of a knife. And this is like built for batoning. This is also going in my, uh, in my sale tomorrow. That thing is crazy. What is that? This is what an is off that? it's off grid knives, alpha beast. Holy cow. Called. It is a, it is a pretty cool knife. I mean, I, I actually, I love this. Is it knife. half inch thick? Like how thick is that thing? Yeah, it's a quarter inch. It's okay. Quarter inch. Dang, look at that. It is a, a really cool knife, but it's one of those ones that, like, like this. Ben, you need one of these in your life, don't you? You need a, you need a a, shining mountain Bowie, don't you? I mean, Dude. just. Brad Pitt didn't carry that. That carried Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. That thing's gigantic. I feel like you could chop someone apart with that thing with you really could. Ease. You, you really could. You could lop a I mean, you know, we don't it, we, yes, you could you could you could. You, you could like indeed. flip burgers with those knives too. They're like <laughs> a double as a spatula. Whale skinner. Indeed. Yeah, exactly. Indeed. Just Whale put it skinner. on a pole, man. Yeah, That's spatula. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you read my mind, Quack. That's funny. Yeah, I, I mean, big and ridiculous is good. Goes with the beard. Yes, it does. It does go with the beard. Did anyone read Blood Meridian? There's a great scene in Blood Meridian uh, where um, 
someone just comes up to a guy at the campfire, you know, it's a bunch of, bunch of cutthroats, uh, in a, in a scalping party in Mexico. And he just walks up to one of them. He has a disagreement with and lops off his head with a Bowie knife. And, and that's exactly the Bowie knife. I imagine, you know, it could span it for sure. It's super sharp and it's heavy. And, uh, well, anyway, there you go. Hinderer. Hey, how's it going, Brent? Okay. I'm Hinderer collector, but I bought my first Hoback Husky. I don't know, man. We're going to have to call you in. We're going to have to call you in. What is the Hoback Husky? Yeah, I do I like Jake Hoback. I was uh, noticing he, he's been making machetes, Jake Hoback, which is funny. F yeah, Cormac McCarthy. I'm, I'm in a phase right now. I just finished um, No Country for Old Men. And man, what a great movie and what a great book. And uh, yeah, I, I love Blood Meridian and... And Child of God kind of freaked me out, but uh, yeah, they're they're great, great books. He's awesome, great book, JN. You've got great taste, sir. So uh, yeah, uh, Stephen, are you coming on? Are we going to see you tonight from across the shock? I like the way you say that, my little my little French fries. <laughs> so I want to get one of those uh, niche design T-shirts. I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to get one and hopefully uh, wear it proudly down down to uh, down to Blade Show. Ben, you will be happy to know that this past weekend I I, uh, I was working and uh, it was last Saturday and I had to interview a couple of uh, political types and I had my Jack Wolf knives hat on and uh, I did I I just I don't know was wearing it proudly and. Uh, and people liked the design of it, and no one was freaked out that it said knives, because my version has, you know, it says Jack Wolf knives on it, and uh, it was cool to wear around, man. I because I'm ordinarily, you know, for work I don't wear a baseball hat, so it was cool to, cool to show up. Uh, Thank hot you take, for no support the brand. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Uh, hot take: No Country for Old Men was better than the book. I I almost found them identical except there's a little bit more uh inner monologue in the book uh from from uh sheriff bell but really i mean like most scenes and much of the dialogue was lifted directly from the book so um uh caleb that is a hot take uh great movie though now i have to rewatch it don't let it get mixed in with the other coins Jan, I almost wanted to get uh, on the show. Yes, I almost get wanted to get on, on the, the show. show. Go to slash. Do you have a webcam and some earbuds? That's all you need. What is a Wust? You, you're going to have to show me what a Wustin Home and Son five and a half inch IX. Oh, IXL. Unfamiliar with the procedure? Yeah, just go to thenifejunkie.com slash join. Aim your camera at you and jump on and if you have earbuds that's that's the way to go or or some sort of uh, uh headset connection uh i had an ixl uh, uh uh pocket knife a little single blade um old knife that i i got in uh um at a thrift not a thrift store but an antique store and i think i sent that to to steven actually uh i could be mistaken uh I have a phone and earbuds. Well, join us, sir. I want to see this knife. Five and a half inch. So I'm wondering, is that a uh, a closed length of a slip joint you're talking about? Or is it a, a Bowie? They were very, very similar. But Anton was portrayed so well in the movie. No kidding, man. He was. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? What's the actor's name? Uh, Javier Bardem. Mm. He's awesome. He, he was just so good. Oh, man. And uh, sorry, that was me about to try and speak like him, but I'm not even going to bother. Yeah, great flick. Yeah, so come on, JN. We want to see We want to see what you've got, what you've got there. Anything new for you, Ben? I, I'm sure I'm sure it's uh, it's been a slow month. What with the all the actual action going on for you? But yes, indeed. Well, so I've been picking up different youtube reviewers mostly from being on your channel right like some people jump in and join so i've been able to follow some new dudes and lefty edc is one 
who I picked up recently and I'm left-handed. So it's like really cool oh. content, you know, just, and he's not yeah. all about lefties of course, but it's a lefties perspective. And I super appreciate that. And I've been enjoying that. I think it was in his videos. He referenced a group on Facebook called left lefty EDC or left hand EDC. I was like, sweet, you know, there'll be eight of us in there. It'll be great. <laughs> so I got in there and I learned that I didn't know this, that Spyderco made a PM2 that's left-handed with the oh, compression sure. lock mirrored. And I was like, damn it. You know, that's a knife. I, I bought it. a righty version of it once and had it for like a, less than 30 days and I sold it because it just wasn't working for me. But huh, so I, I've dude always in the group sold that. me one. He sold me one and he had it modified by some outfit. I can't remember the name, but it has like a custom backspacer and it has micarta scales and it looks like the parts were like parkerized or refinished something. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Um, so I just got that in the mail and he had, it was pretty dirty and needed some maintenance. So I took it all apart and you know, alcoholed it all down and lubed it and loctited the screws and just let it sit overnight. And I, you know, I got, I started to get to know it today and jury's still out a little bit, how I feel about it. Um, but it's interesting to try something different. Do you have it uh, close at hand? I left it at work as in a rush to get out of there. And I wish I would have brought it home because I'd love to show you yeah. next week. So Kevin Lefty EDC just got us a Shadow Ranger. By the way, great to have you guys here. Unfortunately, you didn't win this time. Uh, but but uh, yeah, Ezekiel uh, is a former winner of, uh, what, what did he won? He won the, um, I think he won an off-grid knife. Um, tonight, uh, it was one of our new patrons, Ryan Northcode, 1229, won this awesome XL Strata. Uh, so, yeah, I've always actually wondered about, uh, you know, because closing a um, compression lock with left-handed is just a near disaster for me almost every time. Yeah, I remember dropping it a couple times trying to do it. And I was like, this is a, just an uphill battle. Yeah. Sorry, I can't get on the interweb to connect me. Well, maybe next week, sir. Maybe next week. It's always uh, always good. Last last week was fun having you on. Dustin says, I've got the button lock PM2, which is left-handed PM2 turned into a smock style button by Blades We Love. That's cool. That's a great idea, man. At doing the, the button lock version for a lefty. Yeah, it's always, you know, any kind of workaround. I, I didn't know about any of that stuff. And when I got in that group, I started showing people showing pictures of that mod he's talking about. But, you know, and then I found out they actually make a mirror image compression lock. So that that interested me um, just because the PM2 is like one of those knives that I feel like everybody's touched at some point if you're a knife guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I wanted to get an experience with it. So it wasn't like love at first sight, but I'm going to give it a real chance. I'm going to carry it around, spidey flick it open and compression lock it closed and yeah. see if it, you know, gives me the tickles. Um, but who knows? It's a great user. It feels great in the hand. I I, I just uh, like 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 other spider codes. It just something about the the dimensions of it visually. Well, it's the handle to blade ratio has always kind of bummed me out a little bit. But that's so shallow because it's just how it looks for me. Because it's a great working knife, and uh, you know everything about the PM2 is is pretty excellent. Except for that, uh, I just kind of wish it had a slightly longer blade, or or maybe less choil. I don't know. I don't know. So uh, Ben, uh, oh, well, I did want to show this off, but I, I do want to do a, a knife fight tonight. I'm going to have to call it early tonight. I got a screaming headache that's just been pounding, and I thought it might go away with a cup of coffee, and it hasn't. But have you ever seen one of these suckers? This is an oldie but goodie right here. This is the oh yeah, the Sog Super Bowie. Um, yeah, I was just kind of going through my collection uh, as I was looking at stuff to sell, and uh, because I knew, I knew it had to be one of my big fixed blades because uh, I just you know they don't actually get any use, and so that's why I'm gonna sell that giant. Uh, uh, Bark River Bowie, but 
ah, this the lines of this knife are what really really do it for me i love this thing the uh the sog bowie that mac v sog shape uh shape blade so i i wanted to pull this out and show show it off i just think it's so fucking awesome excuse me yeah friend. i mean to say that's aesthetically pleasing is an understatement right like they just nailed it the all the curves and yeah, yeah i don't know it looks like it looks like it's alive i don't know the right words to express it but they nailed it with that one yeah. Very sweet sog says shredder. Yes, I, I, I agree. And, uh, I, I just, every version of this I've loved, um, you know, I guess, uh, Mr. Filato, I'm a fan of folders that double his fixed blades, extreme ratio. Oh yeah. The row or Rayo. Uh, that's the one that has the pin. I think that goes through. That's really big. Those are cool. Uh, I wish spider co would do a military in a compression lock why haven't they that's the question why haven't they done that and why haven't they just added a little bit of hardware hey bryce great to have you here sir why haven't they added a little bit of liner down towards the um down towards the the lanyard hole just to fix the clip so you could have it tip down or tip tip up that's what i want to know very sexy boy right there i agree i can agree. i uh, show off a prototype give another sneak peek please do i was All right. wondering and chris was has been waiting i've been making him wait he's been waiting to see this i told him i'd show it off so this oh. one oh. see if i can maybe if i come out here it won't be so blurry so this is the little bro little bro jack Let me try this focus you sucker it's like focusing on my beard <laughs> Is this like uh, the size of a 14? There it is. No, it's 3.5 inches close, so it's a 15. Okay. There it is. If I don't move, maybe it'll stay. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. We're seeing it now. And then, yeah, that feels real good on my shoulder, let me tell you. And then we got. <laughs> oh, man, look at that blade. I love that shape. There you go, Chris. I got you, bud. <laughs> Sorry for making you wait, but good things come to those who wait. And then there's the nail nick. I'm not sure, Bryce. Actually, it's it looks uh, like DLC on that fixed blade. I was gonna ask you the same thing. I just wasn't sure if it was the reflection or the blade steel or yeah, what. Yeah, it, it is quite uh mirror mirror y or satin, black satin. That is looking nice, man. That is looking really nice. Really just your basic every person's slip joint knife right man woman and child you know how do you go wrong like benny take my feet. money you're gonna do well my friend <laughs> such a great eye for design i really appreciate that man i, I don't know what to say i'm blushing <laughs> um but i tried to with this one pay homage to what i consider the greatest pattern ever just the basic sleeve board and i god yeah you know i have a thing for a, a big swoopy clip so there it is. Yes. And, you know, like we've talked about before, it's hollow ground and it's so thin behind the edge and it just like slices through everything. And it's so, got that nice big swedge on it. It's like Chris is saying about the swedge and about that, the shape of the swoop of that um, clip. It really is kind of verging on that Spanish look, you know? Yeah. That it's borderline you know what i mean god that's so nice and if you notice it's hard to see it but this actually comes up a little bit yeah before yeah, you, it dips down you can see it against the the dark of your t-shirt yeah yeah and that's it's subtle but i did it on purpose and that when you just i mean some of these things what i found amazing when i design is you know like a degree or two and just a little bit and if you move a line just a little bit it can have such a pronounced effect on how something appears visually, you know, one millimeter is a lot and it doesn't seem like it, but when you're drawing these things out, like one millimeter will totally change, not totally, but materially change the way something looks. Especially so over, over distance. Yes. Yep. And some things are more forgiving, like the radius of that clip, you might be able to change that radius by a degree or two and it'll still look good. If you yank it 
and droop it, it'll look messed up. Or if you push it way up and almost make it straight, it won't look right. So there's like a little bit of a sweet spot. But other things like when you talk about like the length of a blade and the angle that it's coming from down at the sharpening choil up towards the tip, like that's got to be there's one spot where it exists right. And everything else is like, nope, it's not right. Got to keep, got to keep beating it down until it looks right. And your eye knows. Your eye knows. It just, I mean, I think everybody's eye recognizes. Of course, we all have different perspective, right? But like, when something's aesthetically pleasing, a lot of people can agree that it is in fact aesthetically pleasing. Oh yeah, and I think uh, the sleeve board pattern and that size is perfect too. No, there is a big bro. I don't have the prototype for big bro yet, but it's basically this scaled up. Not exactly a perfect scale, but it's four inches. I'm going like this. It's not like that. It's probably right, right. about like that and everything proportionally bigger because you've got your guys who like the three and a half. You got your guys who like the four. And if you're like me, you like both. <laughs> so uh, how many of the prototypes do you have now? Seven models, three pieces each, natural, black, and OD. So I'll have 21 pieces on the table nice. at Blade. So um, last time we were talking a little bit about spring tension. <laughs> mm -hmm. how, are, how are they, how do they differ across your, uh, across the, uh, oh, yeah, they're, exactly. con they're consistent, but they're not exact and identical. Like each one sort of has its own personality. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Let me Thank grab you, Red. a quick water water sip on. sure I, and uh take take red's advice hit the like button if you're uh if you're with us and watching um yeah so like, hey jn how's it going it. sir figured it out figured it out awesome let's let's see this knife you were talking about oh very nice cool come on focus Put your hand behind it and pull it back just a titch. Look at that. So this is from England, right? Yeah, Washington Works, Sheffield. Wow. Oh, great. I think I woke up my dog. <laughs> so when is this from? Have you been able to determine um, date of manufacture? or? I have looked all over online, and I can't get anything specific. Man right. alive, that's cool. I love that. I love that stag handled with uh, the stag handle with the what is it? Four pins. Yeah, it's four pins each side. It's got, I don't know what. There's uh, nothing engraved on the little brass. Uh, the shield there. Yeah. Man, that is very cool. I really wanted to show you the. The stamping of the name on there. So is this a new uh, acquisition for you? No, I got this uh, from my grandparents' estate, my granddad. Wow. Get over there. So what does that say on the blade? I can't quite it make says, it up. It uh, says Waston Hall and Son, uh, Washington Works. Sheffield. Beautiful. And so, it's, you know, it's old enough that you can tell it's like high carbon. Um, it's got a little bit of a swedge here and it's sharp as nuts. Like it, it's as, probably as sharp as any of my, like it's as sharp as my S90B. Right. We've got we've we've gotten two comments on how awesome the stag is and and Lad loves the uh loves the brass guard. This thing is beautiful. So uh does it still have the sheath? You know, I don't <laughs> the sheath okay, the sheath that it has is propping up my phone, but oh. <laughs> that sheath is also uh it's also one that one of my uncles made when he was a boy scout. And okay. it's rather rudimentary. Right. <laughs> and is the clip on this sharpened? Um, no. No, it's not. Okay. Wow. Just man. Still pointy. And it's got a little bit of a plunge grind there, but man, that is oh, that looks pretty thick. Yeah, I'd say it's 
probably three sixteenths. Hang on, I've got a ruler of Larry Mecca. <laughs> That's the English Knife District, says BD. Oh, that's from the 1800s, says That'd Bryce. That's crazy. Yeah, it it it's. It. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty old. Patina is beautiful too. Yeah, that is in great shape. So, yeah, it's three sixteenths. Three sixteenths. Easy. Jeez, that would and that would look so nice on my wall <laughs> behind me. Nice on a lot of people's wall. Yeah, that thing. So what? That's what is it? Five and a half inches? You said? Yeah, it's a six inch ruler. Man, what a find! Very so is cool. this? Uh, was your grandfather a, a collector or a hunter or? He was an antique collector. Um, okay. He he collected all kinds of stuff about the Old West. Um, he collected lots of pictures of Native Americans, uh, photographs. He donated some to the local uh, museum. Uh, he used to collect stereopticons. Oh you yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. He had a huge probably, you know, like I don't know how many people have collections of those, but he had probably one of the biggest collections of those. Um and just all kinds of all kinds of antiques. Stereo opticons were the iPads of their time. They were the <clears throat> the three D movies. The, yeah. Gosh, why is this not focusing? Not, Phone case is probably pretty dirty too. And also, yeah. I'm being really confused because everything's left to right. Yeah. I am a real sucker for that stag. I love that. So, when you feel, um, when you, when it, do you feel much of a transition between the brass and the stag handle? Has it shrunk at all or warped or anything like that? Yeah. Well, the, the brass and the stag are, let's see, on this side. They're pretty close to flush. Oh yeah, yeah, and I see that. Here, yeah. like the stag's a little bit high on the front, is towards you, but on the back, it's about right. So I mean, it's a really like uneven, natural sort of stag pattern there. So right, it's uh, oh, yeah, it's really cool. I like it. Yeah, thanks. I like uh, the uh the the pointy guards too. That's kind of an interesting touch there. Yeah, the ones that I've seen online are um rounder. Some of them have a little bit of a scroll to them even. I haven't seen one exactly like this. <clears throat> I've seen ones that are bigger and ones that are you know kind of cooler, but this one So is, Jan, you know, what what yeah. are the kind of things you collect? Do you collect knives? Or are you just a I, knife user and? I'm a lifelong knife user. I mean, I got my first SAK when I was probably, you know, eight. And uh, <laughs> going left to right. Um, I've always had at least one pocket knife. And before I got into collecting modern knives, I probably had had, you know, maybe five or six lifelong knives that were each in turn, like my only knife I had for a while. Gotcha. So I mean, yeah. I still got that original Swiss Army knife upstairs somewhere, but I, you know, had a couple of those. And then, you know, when Leatherman's came out, my dad got me one of those in like the early nineties and uh, still have that. And then when the wave came out, got me one of those, and I still have that. Um, but I was uh, I was in the hospital uh, last year. And I was in there for you know a good week or something. And I started looking around and like, hey, that's a cool knife because I had bought like I bought a Benchmade Freak, and everyone's gonna say, blah, Freak, blah, rubbery, yeah, junk. 
<laughs> but I carried that thing every day. And I used it every day for six months and it's still like working just fine. So, I mean, it's great. And I, I don't have problems with it in a pocket because I don't keep it in a pocket. Like all my clip knives, knives that have clips, go in a little sleeve on the outside of my pant leg because I wear a uh, certain kind of pants, cargo pants that have a little, they want to call it a hammer loop, whatever, but it's really just a perfect knife home. Right, so, right. So it goes in and out of there easy without all the typical fuss that you hear about the free. But so, yeah, so I got, you know, started collecting. Um, before that happened, a buddy of mine gave me a Native 5, um, and that got stolen. And before that, let's see, my first Spyderco was a Delica Stainless that my dad got me. And that was, see, that got lost. Pulled that out of my pocket, pulled that out of my clip by my winter coat. Anyway, um, so yeah, I started, uh, started collecting seriously seven, eight, nine, ten months ago, something like that. Oh, a babe in arms. <laughs> right, That's... yeah, I'm, a pr I'm pretty much a noob. That's the other reason I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to hop on this because I got – I got very little to add as far as no, 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 no. it's not, it's not, but, it's not like that at all. Um, but yeah. the reason I asked you the question about, about your collecting is I wasn't sure if the knife you were showing us here, the Bowie here was, or this clip point here was, um, part of a larger collection of older knives or, you know, because no, I don't have anything else this old cool or valuable the the older knives are so interesting and you know what what ben is doing making modern versions of these of older knives is is an interesting um you know this is something that a theme that keeps kind of coming back up is that you know these new designs keep being made and new newer 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 designs keep being made but uh we keep kind of looping back to the old designs and they right. get they get refreshes with new materials and and super high tech engineering and such, like uh, you know Ben's Ben's ready to to um, to uh, premiere these knives at Blade Show, and you know there's something about them that's totally new, but there's something about them that's timeless, and and that's uh, you know I was wondering if your uh, clip point was kind of in that in that realm for you. It is, um, well, evolution never throws away a design that works. Um, whether you're talking about biology or you're talking about the evolution of technology and knives and whatnot. So, I mean, if it works, it works, you know, pretty much for all time. So I'd love to see something shaped just like this, you know, like you know, like a more durable format. Like you could drop this, and the stag would just break in half and fly everywhere. You know? I mean, let's not. But yeah, yeah, uh, let's but let's if, please. But if you not. had this handle made of G10 or something, you could be a little more carefree with it. Um, but yeah, the old designs, like um, like the Ria, the CJRB Ria, it's got a really like anachronistic to now blade shape like that blade shape is not like most other things you see running around today it looks a little more like an old style folder or a what, what was that called um no, i don't remember the ria i can't remember which one it is cjrb and and some of these companies it's kind of like what i was saying with all their new designs uh, can't remember them but uh but anyway, yeah, I, I get your, I get your your point, and but I think to your point, there are a lot of uh, updated, durable, like for instance, uh, this is uh, a, a a newer take on the Randall yeah. Model One, uh, but mm -hmm. this is my car to handle. My card has been around a long time, exactly. uh, modern manufacturing and everything, but. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Things, the certain things are timeless, and they and uh, 
evolution doesn't throw away. My... What's that? That's just fil- oh, that's just fulfilled my wish. I said I'd like to see one, and I didn't mean I'd like it if someone would go ahead and make one. I mean, like, I'd like to see one. Oh yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, I like to have as much around me as possible when we do this show. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm totally not prepared. I got uh, I got my two carbon fibers that I've been carrying today. I got my my native chief. S9 oh, nice. Nice. And, you know, that's pretty good. And I got my uh, PM2 CF in fifty two one hundred. Oh, nice. This one's really nice, too. So, I mean. I was very happy that they made the native chief because I like, I always liked the native, but I was, it was always too small for me. I ended up selling my native chief in a, in a fit of desire for something else. And, you know, like so many others that I've sold and kind of regretted, the native chief is one that, I don't know, I just thought was a great looking design, great working design, and had that perfect four inch blade yeah i i wore it to the dentist's office today i said wore it because it lives on the outside of my pants oh yeah, yeah. pulled it out to use it for cutting up a box of the toothbrush open and that was you know fortunately no one screamed but i did get most of that well you know, it, it's what it's for, you know, right. it's what it's for. You got to, you know, hey, sometimes Mama. you get, yeah. Sorry. He has no. not made me think of something. I don't think I've ever heard us talk about it. I'm sure you've talked about it before because I'm relatively new to your channel, but what's your take on serrations? Yes or no? Uh, it depends. It depends. Um, I personally like serrations. Uh, now, you know that I'm not a huge hardcore uh, knife user in terms of my job. Um, I like serrations in the, um, in the, in the self-defense role. I love cold steel serrations on their big gnarly blades, you know. Um, and actually, when I saw his PM2 come out with the serrations, I was like, that's cool because I you rarely see serrations on a, P, on a paramilitary. Um, but... Uh, I, it, it also depends on, on the serration pattern. The Spidey, the Spyderco serrations are awesome. And I, the cold steel serrations are awesome. Plus really, if you're not a, a sharpener, someone who sharpens their knives a lot, um, they are great because they do extend the, the cutting life of the knife. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think. Partial is good too. Yeah. Yep. Whole serrated knife is like pretty much to me. It's like specific for like if I had a fully serrated knife, it would be something that I use for work and not something that I carried around all the time. Um, but my native five that my friend gave me was partially serrated too, and so that's like my first uh, well, my no, my 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 Delico was partially serrated too. I think that came out on. So my first two spider goes were actually serrated. So uh, do you use them for work, the serrations? Um, well, no. I, I don't use my knives for uh, work. I do not have a job right now because oh. of this whole hospital thing. It's been a long story that we, that's not related to knives. It's not germane to this podcast but, uh, or to this live stream. Well, I am glad that. that your hospital stay doesn't have... Oh, okay. Got you. Well, I mean, like uh, fibers, uh, ropes and stuff all day long with the serrations. Ben, how do you feel about the serration thing? So, you know, I know people turn their nose up to them, especially people who sharpen a lot because you really can't. You can sharpen them, but it's not like sharpening a straight edge, you know? Yeah. But if you actually use a serrated knife, they cut so damn good. And... I think there's a lot of merit to a serrated blade if you're cutting shit a lot. <clears throat> and I know, you know, my buddy I've talked about hey, him before, he works and sharpens knives a lot. And he's even said there's just no denying the cutting effectiveness of a well serrated blade. Yeah. And I think 
if in any kind of professional capacity I was carrying a knife, I don't think I would carry. I honestly say like if I was a police officer or EMT, if I had to cut a seat belt, if I had to cut a rope, I don't even think I'd have a flat edge. What do we call it? A flat edge on my Clean. knife. I'd have a, yeah, I'd have a fully serrated knife. And if it got dull, I'd throw it out and buy a new one, you know? Um, Michael, Michael Christie has a how to interesting. Yeah. yeah. They, they cut, but they don't really cut. They can cut, they cut messy sometimes. They, they track, they track oddly through They shred material. more yes. than yeah. a, right. than a plain edge. They will get through, through some shit. And, um, yeah. What was I going to say? I, there's one guy I watch on YouTube. He's a gun channel. His name's Hilton Hilton Yam. He's in the FBI. He has his company's called 108 Performance. He's like real kind of intellectually driven content with the way he approaches everything. I really like him. And it was like wasn't even reviewing a knife, but he pulled out his knife to like I don't know cut open a box or something. And he's like, for years I had straight edge knives and I would sharpen my knives. And he's like. Then one day someone bought me a serrated knife. I'm like, what the hell is this? And he's like, ever since I started using it, I will never carry a knife without serrations again. And that's like a dude like that won't endorse something without, you know, some trial and error behind it. Yeah. And I don't know. It was an interesting uh, thought to me. Well, the, the uh, quack was just mentioning Microtex. I have uh, two of these. Uh, well, this is a Troodon and I have a, a, um, an Ultratech with the, with the dagger and, and half of it is plain edge and half of it is serrated. Sorry, but wiggly blades just are just stupid. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really this is a Jack of all trades. If you need it, you have it uh, on the, you have the serrations on the backside. And actually I like the grip better when it's flipped over this way. Uh, it just is more into, it's more, you know, puts the thumb before the forefinger, but that's incidental. These serrations are really nice, actually, on the on the on the Microtex. They look pretty I fine. I think I, I think it's good. To, yeah, they are. Well, it's a small knife; it's a three inch knife. But yeah, they are pretty fine. Oh, let's see. But uh, so, Brent, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing mighty well, actually. Uh, yes, I am a hinder collector, but I did buy my first J. Kovac knife. So let's see it. Well, it's not here yet. I just bought it just a uh, few hours ago. <laughs> but here, I'll show you what the husky looks like. There's the husky. Oh God, yeah, that's right. And then, hold on, let me show you the. This is this is this is this is a thick baby for what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of hinderer-ish. Would you I say? was just like, gonna say, yeah, yeah it's, that's yeah. why I bought it. Too. That's why I'm I bought seeing, it. <laughs> I'm seeing the vibes. I'm seeing those hinderer vibes. Quack says, yeah. the husky is a beefy boy. Yeah, definitely. And I I've, I've, that's a new one. No, uh, actually, he's made it like I think like last year. I think he said that uh, Jay Kovac made it. Um, but his new one is the sumo, but or something like that. What uh, quarter what? inch blade? No, no, no. Quarter uh, Quack just said it's a quarter inch blade stock on the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Holy mackerel! It's bigger That's than like a Medford. It's what they say is like it's it's bigger <laughs> than a Medford. Medford. That's a sissy knife. Look at this. <laughs> Jeez, man. So that's basically like a folding folding one of these. Pretty uh, much. Uh, yeah. It's a club with a sharp end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sharpened pry bar. But it's it's got definitely has Jake Hoback lines. Uh, yes. uh, what was what was the the Quayback, yeah, it looks the a lot like a Quayback. He got famous on and his uh, his uh, ball bearing system that he made, where it's adjustable. Which oh is yeah, the first for me. So yeah, I'm gonna learn about this knife. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be I'm still a hinder collector, but I mean, hey man, I'm, it's you, we, wrong. we like to tease you, but just because you step s slightly outside the realm, doesn't mean that we doubt your devotion to. To, I mean, it's in your name. <laughs> so, I am collector. <laughs> so you were making a knife for Rick Hinderer and and one for his wife, right? Yeah. Uh, so how are those going? Going pretty well, actually. I'm still trying to figure out how to make a tanto. 
because okay. I don't know what kind of tanto that she really wants because I mean there's American tanto and there's a there's a version of older one. She wants you to choose for her. Pretty much, and I think I'm gonna go with like a, a modified custom version where it's more the tip is more acute, more up. Got you. I love it. I love tantos. They they don't get a lot of love, but uh, I I dig them. Well, you know what? When I get done with this, I'll make you one, Bob. Oh man, please do. I'll 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 show it off. I'll show it off all the time, man. And and if you make it small enough for me to carry, I'll carry it. I, I, I love like carrying knife. blades. I'm good What's at making that? neck knives. Yeah, man. I'll take a neck knife. I'll, I'll take a neck. If I don't mean to be presumptuous, but uh, if you're making neck knives and uh, uh, you think of me, make me one, please. <laughs> I do love neck knives. What do you got? Oh, you've got the minimalist. I, yeah. I love the minimalist. I just got my dad one. And uh, I carried one for years behind my work tag. You know, at work, I have to carry like a have an ID. And now I, I have a different knife back there. But I swear by them. They're awesome. Yeah, uh, the guys I at mean, Shredder say, Donnie B just loaned us some tops to test. Nice. I swear one of those blades makes a four. Uh, oh, oh, a quarter inch looks small. I know which one you're talking about. You're talking about the, um, the, uh, oh. Uh, Mac, what's that called? It, it came out like two years ago, and it's got a double quillion guard, and it's oh, what really are you talking about the scavy. Is it the scavy? No, no, oh. no. It's uh, it's it's got a recurve, and it's a drop point, um, and it's got like five layers of G10 and a layer of yeah. That that thing is gnarly. Uh, uh, Jim, could you put that last comment back up? I see that. Uh, yeah, I remember when I was a kid, my stepdad sharpened my first pocket knife. A pocket tanto, he turned it into a drop point. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, just round off that secondary. Basically, point. it's a spanto, if yeah. you want to call it that. A spanto. Like, oh, I got to fix this for you. <laughs> <laughs> my dad broke the tip off one of his either case or bucks, and he ended up basically turning it into a sharpened reverse tanto. Oh, nice. So, a, little, a little pocket sax. However, uh, I contend that there's no such thing as a reverse tanto. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's just, just a thing. oh oh it's just one of my uh, one of my little quirks. It's a uh, I like to just call it a sax. What was the uh, what was the neck knife you were holding up? Brand that was a that minimalist. Was... Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, yeah, I saw your minimalist, and you have the Warncliffe minimalist, right, Jan? Uh, yeah, I have two. This one's the one. Okay. This is, my okay. Knife. this is my neck knife. <clears throat> nice. The Hinder Flashpoint. I like that thing. That, you could carry that as a EDC, maybe uh, horizontal on your belt, too, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Drop That's it nice in the one. pocket. Pretty much. How they, thick, they how never thick made a pocket sheet for him a while ago. Oh, really? Back. Oh, yeah. Is it about an eighth inch on that one? Is that, um, I think it's like a just three Just hold it up. Three inch. No, the three thickness inch. of the stock, oh, I mean. Oh. Yeah. Go. Dude, I like it. I like that a lot. I mean, it's do, you get, do you use it much? Oh, I use it all the time. Yeah. Right on. It's got a lot of wear and tear on it because it's... Um, I had to help my my grandmother, you know, dig up grass pellets and <laughs> cut all the roots out. So there you go. Nice. Do you nice. remember when neck knives kind of first came to the fore? It was like, yeah. what is this shock? I mean, like it took a while for them to become accepted. I think they're a great idea. And then there was always the 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 thought of like, well, what if you're riding on your horse through the woods and the neck knife gets caught on a thing and you get choked in the, and uh, you know, that all these releases and stuff. I've never, uh, well, I shouldn't, I guess maybe I shouldn't say never anything, but uh, I just think they're a great idea. They are, uh, uh, you know. Um, They've been around for hundreds of years. Hundreds yeah. and hundreds of years. Like the, the Scandi knives them. just hanging, hanging right side up. Yeah, I find them in Viking graves and whatnot. Oh, really? 
That makes sense. I imagine if you need your hands free and you got to get to that knife quick, is there a better place than like the center of your chest? Like, bam, it's right there, you know? Right. So it's logical. It's unobtrusive. Yeah, I mean, it is. The dentist might have seen my native cheek, but they didn't know I was wearing a mineralist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, like you're saying, center placement is great. And then also you're doing, you know, uh, it's sort of the similar concept to the bird and trout knife, you know, where you got the little ring and then you can kind of drop it while you, and, and it's still hanging there and then you need it, you can get it back. Um, well, it's kind of the same thing. You do your work, stick it in there, especially if it's if it's a, a, like the Mora, that Mora Eldris or something like that. I was that. wearing that today too. Oh, were you my really? Gardening knife. That's my oh. gardening knife, yeah. One of our viewers carries that all the time. Ezekiel carries his minimalist everywhere but school. <laughs> Apparently not allowed at school. That's so cool. Nice. Yeah. Oh, man. Neck knives are just modern man's medallion necklace. That's right. That's Pretty much. If you have steel flame with it, then, yeah, you're pretty good. <laughs> Did you say if you have steel flame with it? Yeah, it's another brand. It's a really no. good brand. Yeah, I know. I, I know. It's like it's like all the clips on your hinderers, right? <laughs> and I'm the only man in the in the whole collector's realm does not have any steel flame. I, I don't either. I don't either. I want to because I really want to love to have a skull on mine. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so into the skull thing. I gotta say, even. Even uh, this is the this is the closest I get to liking skulls, and this is a little uh, um, Ed's manifesto symbol thing on my uh, Elvia. I like that. I think it's kind of cool. But other than that, I don't like skulls all over the. And plus, Emerson's coming out the new model, by the way. Uh, newer than the one that just came out. He's making a minimalist one about this small. And has no no wave on it, and it's gonna come out sometime. He said, and yeah. this this is the one that uh, Edwin just got. Uh, the it's it's very slim and slender and and short and has very little in the way of contouring. Have you seen it? It's a little drop point. No, I don't think I have. I can't remember what the hell it's called. It's um, not a CQC fourteen because the CQC fourteen is. California legal version, but it's no, it's not that snubby, snubby. Uh, no, 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 he just he just announced uh, a new knife. That's and of course you know uh, Edwin know. Edwin got one because um, he gets every Emerson. <laughs> but uh, they also have a trainer of this. I want to get ooh, but, but I'm late on that, so I'm sure I won't get that for another. Uh, you know, you got to keep your ear to the ground with all this stuff. That's the thing these days, right? Like nothing's ever in stock. I know. It's yeah, crazy. that's why when I go and buy a hinder, every time when the new Bowie half track comes out, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna buy, it. I'm gonna buy it now. Nope, nope, mm -mm. nope. I do, I do love that half track Bowie. It's a beautiful shape. It's exclusive for USMA Blade. I mean, it's, and I know the owners there too. Yeah, so. man, th that's a cool outfit. I like that place. That's where I've gotten all of, well, no, I got one of my hinderers on the secondary, but all, all of my new hinderers have been through there. And also I've been to uh, the most famous place, House of Blades. House of Blades. What's House of Blades? What is that? It's down here in Texas. It's uh, the House of Knives, pretty much. You can get, it's all Medford, Rick Hinderer. Um, Chris Reeves case. They have all these case knives. Spider Co. They have like two rows of Spider Co's. Um, which one did you think? Okay, just big ass knife store then. Texas <laughs> <size> <laughs> knife store. Yeah, pretty much. Right, cool. It's not like Smoking Gun want... Knife Works. It's not like that. It's just only one roof only. It's just in <clears> one <throat> there. Well, it's funny that we're talking about hinderers, Brant, because tonight's knife fight, which is we are there, is hinderer. Oh. Versus Kershaw. Oh, see what, see what we're doing here. Yeah, we're, I see what you're doing. The Kershaw right. versus Kinder. Okay, okay. You know, uh, so uh, it's it's kind of two different ends of the spectrum, but both, you know, um, well.
Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue either either of these cases, but uh, I think you have to argue for Kershaw. And then I think someone else here, Ben or JN, has to argue for Hinderer. I don't have the knowledge of the chops to argue for Bob. I think you got to do this one, man. Cause I, right. could, I can't speak on either. Honestly, I can wing my way through just about anything, but I, <laughs> this one's a little beyond me. Unfortunately, I apologize. Mm, well, the reason I chose this is because uh, I'm always pairing things up. Uh, it's either one blade shape against another or one lock type against another or one brand against another, but they're always comparable. But in this case, they're, they are, but for, for, for different reasons. So actually, if, if you, you can choose, Brant, which side you want to argue for. Well, hinderer. Okay. All right. So I will argue Kershaw. You will argue hinderer, but you will start and I will give you, I will give you a minute and a half starting in five, four, three, two, one. Well, basically, if you're buying a hinderer, you're going to have to get the quality. You're not just only buying, you know, a generic, you know, Chinese made knife that's going to be made here in America. It's only made in in Ohio, Shreve, Ohio, um, USMA Blade exclusives they make them there but uh it's it's just american made these are these are heavier duty knives than any other brand i mean i'm not knocking any other brands but it's these last you longer than than any other brand pretty much and i, I like them they're they're the knife to choose from because rick does a great job by designing them he makes them trim his head and then here here they are I mean, that's that's how that's how it is. That, that, that's all. That's all it. right, all right, okay. Well, let let me just say that if you like Hinderer, if you like the Hinderer designs, um, you don't have to pay four hundred and fifty bucks for them. You can actually buy. Uh, you could you could buy um, uh, several hundred of them from Kershaw uh, for much much less. Um, and my point is, uh, yes, uh, Hinderer knives are excellent, stout, um, made in Ohio, my home state, the state I grew up in, and uh, by a, a great innovator who has done incredible things for the knife industry. Um, however, we don't all have that kind of money to spend on knives, especially if it's a work knife. And that is the Hinderer's uh, you know, main selling point is that it is a tough tough knife that will uh, do and accomplish anything. But many of us feel like we cannot take a $400 knife and horse it through uh, a hard day's work uh, in good conscience. Uh, we're, we're going to be more guarded with such an investment. So I say that uh, Kershaw is a great brand because it collaborates with great knife designers like Ernest Emerson, or in this case, uh, Rick Hinderer, to produce their designs in a much more affordable way um, so that you can take that knife to the job site and uh, really go to town using it and not not be out a whole lot of money uh, in case it falls out of your pocket and, and drops 20 stories or 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 what have you gets crushed in a, in a, you know, crushing device. And uh, so for that reason, uh, I would say that the real work knife, the real hard use knife is the Kershaw because, um, you know, for the same re because the loss of it is not a big deal and real hard work oftentimes, uh, takes its toll on tools. Anyone keeping time on Bob? Uh, yeah, I was. I was, and I came in right in a minute and a half. Didn't I, Jim? <laughs> so I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> you think I'm full of it. Kershaw has a great selection from economy to higher end, especially love the Emersons. Thank you, guys. 
they side with me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, <laughs> and actually, their ZT Emersons are are awesome. Hinderer built like an Abrams A1 tank. That's for sure. That's for sure. I, don't get me wrong. I love Hinderers. Got my my 24 Bowie right here. Uh, I, I want that so bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I picked it up. And, uh, you can get an Emerson for 45 bucks. That's true. That's true. And and the Kershaw Emersons are are um, maybe not each and every one of them, but uh, the the ones I've had have been awesome. Uh, I only have one Kershaw and the Kershaw Emerson CQ6K for $19 at Blade HQ. Yeah, I had the... Um, Is that the one that has the... Is that the one that has the upswept kind of Bowie type blade? The six. Uh, that, that, that's no, no. The the six K the six K came in the Bowie and in the um. Am I in thinking of the eleven? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The oh, they, right, right. Market. There is. They did come out with one that that is evocative of the CQC thirteen. Haha, we ran over that's a Kershaw cannonball with a car. It held up amazing. <laughs> that's funny. Greetings from Greece. Oh my gosh, man. Whoa. Right? That's awesome. I spent my cool. honeymoon on Crete. I, I'm a big fan of Greece and and uh we we tell we read a lot of uh Greek mythology here. Brant representing Hinderer tonight's knife fight is atonement for buying a hoe back. <laughs> so, uh, gentlemen in Greece, presumably gentlemen in Greece, what are you carrying tonight? We're about to sign off, but I really want to know what you're carrying uh, and what you can get over in Greece. I I have a a, a a Greek knife hanging on the wall right over there, which I wish I had down here, but I got it on our honeymoon it's from crete and it's got a really cool split handle very very interesting yeah that's cool uh good night caleb it's great to have you sir it's uh past midnight here on the east coast and uh well uh as usual i'm, I'm getting up in five hours four hours and 55 minutes take the dog out and uh this is this has been my new uh taking the dog out uh, at 5 a.m. tool. <laughs> You're in love with that thing, Bob. I do like this thing. <laughs> I that like thing this is thing cool. That is cool. It really is. And uh, and I've been trying to carry it uh, in, in the waistband, uh, and I, I already ripped a shirt <laughs> trying to put it back in. So I think I'll get, I'll, I'll get used to it eventually. But uh, just uh, but before that happens, I'll, I'll, I can just still practice with it. <laughs> it's a cool thing. Mr. Filato, great debate. One may argue that there would be no hinderer without the founding of Kershaw Kai. Hinderer for the win. Yeah, ultimately, I agree. Here's a little, a little history fact for you guys. Did you yeah. know that Rick Hinderer actually worked for Kershaw in the late 80s? Oh, really? Yes. Doing what? I thought he was a firefighter back then or breaking he horses was. or doing something else. He stubborn. was, but... In his early years, when he was a teen, he was a worker. He worked for Kershaw. Ah, how about that? That's pretty cool. If uh, you if you wanted to meet the maker, um, which is a good podcast too. Yeah. And he talks about it. There's a two parter, really good. His first ah, knife, and enough. believe it or not, his first knife was a Barlow K bar, and yeah, cool. A Barlow. Barlow. That's the. I think that's the name I was trying to think of when I was talking about the the Rhea's interesting shape. Ah. Is that what I'm thinking of? That kind of swell down nice. there. That belly. Well, I mean, the Barlow has different. Maybe, maybe the Barlow is a little rounder. In front. Like I say, I don't really. A Barlow. A Barlow really has to do about uh, the the um, the bolster, doesn't it? It's got. Yeah. Like, 7 a.m. over here, and I'm leaving for work with my small 21. Cheers. Right on, man. Thank you for nice. joining us. That's so cool to hear from you. Uh, I hope hope everything's great for you over there, and I hope it's as beautiful as ever. Have a great day at work, sir. Tomahawk is a vicious self-defense tool. That's right. That's me. That's me. Vicious. and Well, look at this, though. I mean, this thing is just so cool. The, the guy... Uh, Bob video on coconut. <laughs> yes, yes, dude. Oh, that'd be so cool to see. 
the the gentleman who makes these i'm going to be interviewing him him soon uh he's a fascinating dude uh has a real fascination with weapons but he carries a, a one of his larger models in his in his pants <laughs> on a daily oh, basis boy. and he really you know he advocates uh tomahawks for self defense you know he's like he carries a gun and a tomahawk i'm like you know I'm not going to argue with that. I, I think it's I think it's very cool. <laughs> Dude is ready. He's covered. He is ready. He's <laughs> freaking exactly. ready, man. But what I think the classic combination is this: tomahawk and a Bowie. You know, but uh, they they, for, yeah. they take exception to that at work. So not happening. All right, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you all for coming on. Ben, as always, awesome to see your work and see what's coming up. Blade Show, table 16E. C, as in Charlie. C, I knew it, and then I I second-guessed myself. And uh, Brant, always a pleasure to see you and see you uh, betraying uh, Rick Hinderer by going with Jake Hoback. But uh, we, I know he doesn't watch this show because he doesn't return my calls. You need to help me get him on my show, Brant. I will, I'm, I will help you with that. Thank you. Once, and, once, once Blade shows over and all that and he settles down, I'll, I will do that. Okay. Thank you, sir. And JN, it was a pleasure meeting you, sir. Uh, it's nice really, to meet you guys too. Really Thanks. cool. Bye. Oh, yeah. Really cool to see that knife of yours. And uh, what a great find to, to, to get from your grandfather's estate. So uh, thank you, one and all, Quack. Thank yeah. you, sir. And uh, thank you. I think the headache is starting to go away right, right in time <laughs> for me to go to bed. It's time for bed. Yeah, indeed. Incognito, take care. All right, everybody, for Jim working his magic behind the scenes here, as you can see, all these cool shots here. I'm Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs> <laughs>